Songs in the Night. Good evening, everyone. From the friendly village church in the pleasant community of Western Springs, Illinois, come Songs in the Night with Pastor Lloyd Fesmeyer, soloist Glenn Jorian, the King's Carolers, and organist Don Husted. This is Songs in the Night. Here's Pastor Fesmeyer. Thank you, Ted Seeley, and welcome, friends, to this evening's broadcast. We trust that as you listen to the songs and message, that God will be speaking and give you a song in the night. personal question that it's in the minds of many thinking Americans today is what should I do in the light of the warnings and predictions of our leaders that a nuclear attack upon this country is now a sober possibility, an attack that could devastate a major portion of the United States in one decisive blow. These warnings and predictions have been coming to us with monotonous and increasing regularity. Most of us have done nothing about them. Perhaps it's because we feel there's nothing we can do. What's going to be is going to be no matter what we do. On the other hand, it may be there's reluctance on our part to face reality. We don't want to believe that our way of life may be destroyed. We do not like to face unpleasant facts. 
We're like a man who has constant warning symptoms in his body that something's wrong, but puts off going to the doctor because he's unwilling to face the truth. Now it may surprise you to know that the Bible has something to say on this important question. Speaking of the day of the Lord, that time when, according to the Bible, the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat, and the earth also, the Bible asks this question, Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought you to be in lives of holiness and godliness? In other words, now that the awful possibility has come that earth may be destroyed and our way of life snatched from us, what kind of person ought I to be? Have you thought of this, friend? Are you the person you ought to be? I'm thankful tonight in view of what may come upon this world that God hasn't left us in ignorance of his will for our lives. He has revealed in his word the kind of person we ought to be. And blessed be his name, he's revealed the kind of person we can be by his grace and by his power. Down through the ages, man has had an answer to the question, what manner of person ought I to be? This answer is nowhere better given than in the ancient book of Ecclesiastes. The writer of the book says, and I quote, there's nothing better for a man than that he should eat and drink and that he should make his soul enjoy the good of his labor. To put this in everyday language, it's saying that a man ought to work if he's going to eat. He ought to be respectable. He ought to support and provide for his family. But having done this, he has no other duty than to enjoy the fruits of his labor. This is the philosophy of many today. It was the philosophy of the man described in the Bible who worked hard and accumulated great possessions 
and then said, So, take thine ease, eat, drink, and be merry, for thou hast much goods laid up for many years. He was saying there's nothing better than that a man should eat and drink and enjoy the good of his labor. But I wonder if this age-old answer is sufficient for us today, especially in the light of the problems we face. If disaster may strike us at any moment so that we'll not be permitted to enjoy the fruit of our labor, what good then is a materialistic philosophy? Now, I believe we all should work and work hard. I believe a man should provide in the very best way he can for his family. And certainly a person has the right to enjoy the fruit of his labor. But we're short-sighted if we only go that far and no further. Common sense would tell us to prepare for whatever eventuality may come upon us. There are a number of possibilities that can happen in this world tonight. For one thing, the Lord Jesus Christ can return. He's promised to do so. That would be wonderful, wouldn't it? Or a plane can swoop down out of the skies and loose destruction upon us. That's another possibility. Or death in one of its numerous forms can strike. In the Department of Commerce building in Washington, D.C., there's a population meter which registers second by second the nation's population. Every nine seconds, a blaze of colored bulbs announces the birth of a new American. But every 21 seconds, another color flashes a silent requiem for one who has died. Yes, the Bible's right when it says in view of these possibilities, we ought to live lives of holiness and godliness. We ought to be prepared. Any moment can bring us into the immediate presence of a holy God. Well, there's only one preparation for that moment, and that's to be cleansed in the blood of Christ and to be dressed in his perfect righteousness. May God help you and may he help me to be the person we ought to be. listening to Songs in the Night, coming to you from the Village Church in Western Springs, Illinois. Visitors are always welcome here at Songs in the Night, and tonight's visible audience comes from three towns and cities of Illinois. Whenever you can be with us, please come. The Village Church is located at Wolf Road and 45th Street in Western Springs, Illinois, a suburban community 15 miles southwest of Chicago. And the recording service begins at 9.30 Sunday evening. Perhaps you'd like to bring a delegation from your church or social group. Remember the time, Sunday evenings, at 9.30. And please note that this time is different from the time Songs in the Night is heard in the Chicago area. Don't confuse the recording service with the time you hear Songs in the Night on the air. The recording service is at the Village Church, Sunday evenings, 9.30 to 10.15. Why don't you plan to visit us next Sunday? And now it's more music from Glenjorian, Don Husted, and the King's Carolers. 